Hi, my name is Antonia Garner. I'm a nurse practitioner student at Fresno State in my final semester. I'm going to be doing a podcast on melanoma. Melanoma is one of the deadliest forms of skin cancer and is responsible for about 80% of deaths related to skin cancer. Melanoma is one of the fastest increasing cancers across the United States. Among the top seven most common cancers in the U.S., melanoma is the only one whose incidence has continued to rise. In the past 40 years, the incidence of melanoma in young women has increased by 800% and young men by 400%. Melanoma is the most common form of cancer in young adults between the ages of 20 to 39 years old. After reviewing current research, the need for education regarding melanoma seems to be focused around the need for increased awareness of the disease and the necessity of full body skin examination. Research shows that providers have knowledge of what to look for during an assessment, but the assessments are just not being done often enough. Melanoma is being undiagnosed because of lack of assessment being performed. The need is to educate about the increase in melanoma cases presenting on a yearly basis and the need for providers to take time to educate their patients about melanoma prevention. A study that was looked at talked a lot about providing patient education and risk factors and preventative techniques that actually increase the rate of performing melanoma skin examinations. After reviewing current research based on top reasons why providers do not regularly perform skin assessments. The conclusion was reason, top reasons why included time constraint, lack of confidence in the ability of the provider to perform skin assessment, their fear of missing a melanoma, and not having an appropriate office setting. So even though providers have the knowledge to perform the skin assessments, they are still not confident enough in their skills to be assertive to perform regular annual skin assessments on patients. Current melanoma education stresses the detection of early melanoma with high curable rates after surgical excision. If melanoma is caught before it spreads to the lymph nodes, the five-year survival rate is 98%. The five-year survival rate for regional and distant melanoma after it has metastasized and spread to the lymph nodes is somewhere between 50 and 15%. Curability is directly related to the size and depth of the invasion of the tumor. Therefore, identification of early thin melanoma by clinical examination is critical by providers. My main goal in doing this podcast was to educate providers about melanoma, and more importantly, to raise awareness of the disease. Right now, the current rate of melanoma is one in every 50 individuals will develop it in their lifetime. It's important that as providers, we're aware of risk factors and we take them into account when we see patients in our offices. The major risk factors include exposure to ultraviolet light and immunosuppression. Other factors like ionizing radiation, chemicals, and family history also play a a large role. Um, The use of tanning beds before the age of 30 increases the risk of melanoma by 75%. And... We're all aware that this younger generation of people coming through have and still are continuing to use quite a bit of tanning beds. So we have to be aware that melanoma is probably going to be on the rise even more than it has been the last couple decades. Melanoma is unusual in children before puberty, although the incidence in children has also recently increased. Large, large number of nevi and inability to tan and a family history are also strong risk factors. Blacks and Asians have one-twelfth the risk of developing melanoma as a white person. 
but the more darkly pigmented individuals have more risk of getting melanomas involved with their hands, feet, mucous membranes, and eyes. So just something to take into consideration consideration when assessing <clears throat> blacks and Asians. Also, fair skin, prolonged sun exposure, a prior history of blistering sunburns before the age of 15, family history, personal history of melanoma, the presence of atypical or dysplastic nevi, or numerous appearing abnormal appearing nevi, also increases the risk for developing melanoma. Fair skin, blonde or red hair, blue or green eyes, freckles, and the inability to tan are all associated with increased melanoma. About 30% of melanomas arise in pre-existing melanotic lesions, and 70% of them arise from normal skin. Um, almost all melanomas show an initial radial growth phase, followed by a subsequent vertical growth phase. Since metastasis occurs only infrequently during the radial growth phase, detection of early melanoma during this phase is essential. So basically, the melanoma grows very superficially at the beginning. And when it's still staying superficial, it has not grown deep into the tissue and met up with the bloodstream yet. Therefore, it has not spread to the lymph nodes. Therefore, a good prognosis is entirely attributed to early detection. Melanoma can be found on any surface of the skin, including the mucous membranes and the retina. A physical examination should include assessment of the liver, spleen, and lymph nodes as well. Superficial spreading melanoma is the most common type of melanoma and accounts for about 70% of all cases. This lesion appears to usually be flat, sometimes slightly raised, pigmented, papular, or plaque with irregular features, most commonly found on backs of men and the lower legs of women. The color is varied, often black or brown, and it has erythematous borders. The pigmented lesion may have changed with enlargement rapidly before deep invasion occurs. The second most common type of melanoma is nodular melanoma, and it accounts for 15 to 30 percent of the cases. The tumor is located most commonly on the head, neck, and trunk in men and is characterized by a rapid nodular growth without radial growth phase. A pigmented lesion may be brown, black, or blue. However, amelanotic forms occur. They appear to be pink or red papules without pigmentation. The third most common type of melanoma is lentigo maligna melanoma. This type of melanoma usually occurs in sun-exposed areas, especially the face in elderly individuals. The lesion initially appears as a lentigo maligna, or a, also known as a Hutchinson's freckle, an irregularly pigmented macule or jagged or with notched borders found most often on the cheek. The onset of a nodular growth and melanoma occur 10 to 15 years after the initial development of the precursor lentigo maligna. The least common type of melanoma is an acrolentiginous melanoma. It accounts for 2 to 8 percent of melanoma cases. It's difficult to diagnose and it usually occurs on the palms, soles, fingers, and toes and its most common form of melanoma in blacks. You'll see this as a pigmented streak in the nail or also a pigmented pigmentation of the cuticle is diagnostic. The seriousness of this disease places a huge responsibility on primary care providers. It is recommended that in clinical practice, no matter what the presenting complaint, a total body skin examination should be done on all new patients. It is helpful to question patients according to a mnemonic list of melanoma risk. The mnemonic is MM, 
Risk. The first M stands for moles, atypical moles, dysplastic nevi. The second M is for moles, common moles with no numbers greater than 50, patients with more than 50 moles on their body. The R is red hair and freckles. I, inability to tan, skin phototypes 1 and 2. S stands for sunburns, severe sunburns, especially before the age of 14. And K, kind red, family's history of melanoma. The ABCDE rule of melanoma is a simple way to remember characteristics that should alert you for possible malignancies of melanoma. A stands for asymmetry of the lesion. One half of the mole or birthmark is, does not match the other half. B is for border. Edges are irregular, ragged, notched, or blurred, and sometimes the pigment, pigment may be streaming out of the borders. C is for color. The color is not the same all over the lesion and may have different shades of color, sometimes black, brown, blue, red, and even sometimes white. Sometimes melanomas can be amelanotic. D is for diameter. The diameter is greater than six millimeters in size, which is about the size of a pencil eraser, or is growing larger. E stands for elevation, but is not always present in all melanomas. So some people also use E for enlargement. A history of increased in size of the lesion is one of the most important signs of melanoma. In African Americans, Asian Americans, and dark-skinned individuals, abnormal lesions of the nails, hands, or feet should also be evaluated since these are common sites for melanomas in these populations. If during your skin examination you identify an atypical appearing lesion this, and you sus suspect melanoma, this warrants an immediate referral to a dermatologist for further evaluation. If a melanoma is diagnosed by the dermatologist, treatment consists of wide surgical excision of the lesion as well as a sentinel lymph node biopsy. Depending on the stage of the melanoma, further treatment may be required. This would be include but not be limited to chemotherapy, radiation, interferon treatments, regular skin examinations, as well as continuous education for the patient to help prevent any new melanotic lesions. As for ongoing treatment of a person diagnosed with melanoma, it is recommended that a skin examination is done every three months for the first three years because 80% of recurrences happen within this time frame. After the initial three months, I mean after the initial three years, um, evaluations are recommended to be done every six months following that for two more years and then annually for the rest of their life. Most recurrences are detected by history and physical examination and not by tests. All immediate family members should be evaluated for the presence of melanoma or for precursor lesions. Patient education regarding melanoma is huge. It's about prevention, getting your patients to understand risks involved and how they can protect themselves. We now know that Sun exposure is one of the biggest causes of melanoma. 80% of lifetime sun exposure occurs before the age of 18. So precautions include avoiding the sun, wearing protective clothing, using sunscreens to prevent solar damage to the skin for both children and adults, prevention of sunburns which carry out a high risk of malignant transformation over time. Sun exposure for longer than 15 minutes requires protection with the use of sunscreen with an SPF of at least 30. Sunscreen should be applied before the sun and reapplied every two hours or after swimming. Regardless if the sunblocks say that they are waterproof, they should be reapplied once you get out of the water. <laughs> it's important for the patient's 
to know that they should seek medical attention for non-healing sores. And any lesion that is changing in size, shape, color, or texture. Another thing that we want to educate our patients is to avoid activities outdoors during high sun exposure hours, which is between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So if they can try and avoid being outside in the midday. It is as simple as simply having your patient take off their t-shirt when you listen to their lungs, which is a good practice anyways for auscultation. And B, you get to see almost half of the patient's skin. If at minimum that that's all you get out of this podcast, please have your patient take off their shirt when you auscultate their lungs. You can see their skin. You can see if there's anything suspicious and you can refer them out to a dermatologist if you're worried about a lesion. And this concludes my podcast. There is a post-test I'd like you to take and so I can see how educational this tool was. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed.